Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch. If you've ever added an API key directly to your Swift app, you might be surprised at how easy it is for someone to find it, even in a released app. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through a simple app using the Miriam Webster API, and then I'm going to show you how to protect your API key using the Swift Confidential Kit package. If you want to work along with me to verify that what I'm saying makes sense to you, you can download the starter project from the link in the description. There is no completed branch, so if you want to verify the API obfuscation, then you'll have to work along. Just downloaded the zipped archive or clone or fork the branch to your own repository. The app, once it has been applied, will allow you to enter words into the text field, and when you press search on the keyboard, it'll make requests to the Miriam Webster API to find the definition and provide you with synonyms for a word. It's very simple. You can clear the screen and then enter any word that you want. And then when you press enter, if the word exists, the results are displayed. It's a fairly simple application where I have an instance of an observable manager class that makes calls to the dictionary API to fetch the synonyms for words entered into the text field and after the enter key on the keyboard is pressed. And I'll leave it up to you to view and inspect the code further. The important files are first the observable thesaurus manager class that uses an API key to make those calls to the dictionary API that will return JSON data that is then decoded. And it's decoded into a thesaurus model. And that gives me a definitions and an array of synonyms within another array in another codable struct called meta. The Thesaurus Manager will decode the data and store the results in the definition and synonyms array property and make note of any errors. The results are then displayed in the Thesaurus view. This is a very typical API implementation, nothing special. The problem that I have right now is that I haven't entered an API key. So if I enter a word and press the return key, it presents an error, as you see. I hope you're enjoying this video, and if you are, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment. It would also really help if you could subscribe to my channel and enable notifications so that you're alerted when I drop a new one here on YouTube. I put out weekly videos and I seldom miss a week, so if you really want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. A link is in the description. So we'll need to visit the Dictionary API site for Miriam Webster's Dictionary and sign up for a developer account. It's free, and here you can fill in information about your app. All you really need is to request an API key, and the one that you want is the Collegiate Thesaurus. I also have requested on mine a Dictionary API, but I'm not going to be using it in this application. So this is what I enter for the app. And you can do the same if you like. Just make some URL up for the application. I don't think it really matters. And very quickly, once after you've submitted, you'll get an email asking you for confirmation. And then once completed, you can log in to the site. Once you've logged in, go to your keys and copy your thesaurus key. Now for obvious reasons, I'm hiding most of mine here, but I'll copy it nonetheless. And then I can return to Xcode. And then in the Thesaurus Manager class, I'll enter that key here instead of this placeholder. So now, even in preview, I'm going to try and find a synonym for the word developer. Great. How about the word focus? Great. It's working. Now what I've done here by entering the API key as a clear string in my app is very dangerous, particularly if it were costing me money for the API use. Now, I personally have never tried to discover an API key that's embedded as a string within a compiled iPhone app, but let me show you how easy it is to discover this. Now, there are tools that'll make it easier and clearer, but let me just show you how the string is exposed. Even if I did somehow keep the string out of my committed source code, it can be discoverable from the installed application. Let me show you what I mean. First, from the product menu, choose Archive 
to archive the app with the revealed API key. Once it's been built and archived, the organizer window will open and you'll see the archive that normally is uploaded to the App Store as an IPA file. And we can see what that file looks like if we choose instead to just select the Distribute the app and then choose Debugging and click on Distribute. Now, once completed, you can export it somewhere. So I'm going to export it to the desktop. I can open the folder on the desktop and I can locate the IPA file, the whatword.ipa. Now this IPA file is actually a compressed zipped archive that needs to be unzipped. And I can do all of this in terminal. So I'm going to open the folder in terminal by right clicking on the folder down here and choose open in terminal. Now I'm at that path. To unzip the archive, I just have to type unzip space what word dot IPA. Now this creates a payload folder. So I'm going to change the directory into that folder using a CD command. So CD payload. Now if I list the files with an ls l, I can see a what word dot app which is actually the package, which itself is another folder. So I'm going to change directory into that folder or that app. So cd whatword.app. And then again, I can list all the files that are in there with an ls-l. And one of them is the actual whatword executable. Now we can find all of the strings that are used in the app and push that off to a text file so that I can inspect it. And we can do this again in terminal using a strings command on what word, and then channel the output to my desktop in a file named IPA underscore strings dot txt. Now, if I open this file in a text editor, you'll see that there are lots of strings here, but hackers actually know what they're looking for. And as I said, there are better tools for this. But if you look for it, you'll find your API key there as clear text. So anyone can build a similar app using your API key. And if that API key costs money, you'll be on the hook for it. Another problem is that if I were to commit this file to my Git repository and push it up to GitHub, I'd get this warning from Git Guardian that I've stored an API key in my project. And it is now, even though in a private repository, in danger of being discovered and used by others. So that's not good either. So there's a couple of things that we're going to have to do here to resolve our issues. Simply obfuscating your API keys with simple encryption can still be hacked with tools like Hopper or Ghidra to extract the strings, but it's still better than nothing. And the best way, though, is a server-side proxy where you offload key usage to a server. But unfortunately, this isn't really an option for a lot of us. So what I've learned is that obfuscation is still better than nothing at all. And there's a Swift package called Confidential Kit that makes the obfuscation easy for you and quite complicated for hackers to hack. Confidential Kit can be found at the Secure Veil GitHub repository under Swift Confidential. The documentation, though, isn't that easy to understand. So what I thought I'd do is step you through the process. So the first thing that we need to do is to add two required package dependencies using Swift Package Manager. So in your project, we can add those two packages. The links are in the description. The first one we need is the Swift Confidential Package. When prompted for the Swift Confidential Package, make sure you check the box for the product Confidential Kit and add it to your app target. Do not include the underscore confidential. And then the second package we need to install is the Swift Confidential Plugin. Once the plugin has been installed, we'll need to add it to our target. So select your app target under Targets in the main panel. 
and then go to the Build Phases tab. Scroll down to the section called Run Build Tool Plugins. Click the button at the bottom of the section, and then in the dialog that appears, select Confidential. This is the plugin from that Swift Confidential plugin package, and then click on Add. Well, you can also verify that in the Targets General tab, you only have the Confidential Kit Framework installed. If the underscore one is there, remove it. And then the next thing we have to do is to create a configuration YAML file that is stored at our project root. And this file is used to store your API keys and specify what encryption methods you want to invoke for the obfuscation. So to get to that root, we can simply right click on the what folder and then choose show in finder. And that's where your Xcode proj file is, the what word.xcode proj. Now the confidential YAML file is really just a specially configured text file. And to create it, I like to open a directory in terminal. So right here, and then I'm just going to use the touch command and I'm going to create the file, and it has to be called confidential.yml. And then I can open this in a text editor. I'm going to return to the website now and just take a look at the structure of a YAML file. There's an algorithm section, followed by a namespace, and then the secrets that you want to obfuscate. So I'm just going to copy this entire example here and paste it into the text file, even though it warns me not to really do that. Now I'm going to change the namespace that gets created from obfuscated literals to just secrets with a capital S. And we only have one secret, and that name of that secret we're going to call API key. And that API key only has a single value which is the string representing our API key. So let me paste it in here. That's all OK. We can return to the website, though, and you'll note that it says that this example algorithm is for demonstration only. For production, we should customize the algorithm and keep it secret. So we shouldn't be using those same two that they have in the sample code. So I'm going to go back here in the website and take a look at the other algorithms available. And I'm going to pick ones and change the order here. I want to add a compress using LZMA as one of my algorithms. I'm going to change this encryption to 256-bit encryption. And I'll just leave the shuffle here. Well, now I can build my project. When you build your project, the plugin will generate the obfuscated Swift file automatically, but you don't see it anywhere in your project. So where is it? Well, that file is generated and added to the Derive Data folder of your project. So to locate the Derive Data folder for the project, open your Xcode settings and go to the Locations tab. And then tap on the right arrow to get and open the Derived Data folder for all of your apps and simulators. Open the folder for your app and simulator. And ours is this what word. And then I'm going to navigate to find the file. So we'll open the build folder, the intermediate.noindex, build tools plugin, intermediates, what word.output, what word, confidential obfuscated sources. And here you find the confidential.generated.swift. Now, if you open this file, you'll see that it's created an enum called secrets. That's our namespace. And there is also a static API key property that contains the encrypted key for our API key. It's used our algorithms to encrypt that key. And this is the obfuscated API key that we can use in our project. 
So to use this then, let's return back to Xcode. In the thesaurus manager file, import confidential kit. And then make sure you first clean your build folder and build again. That's what I find really works. In the private API key then, we can replace that string using string interpolation, and we can access our secrets namespace. And you can see that we can choose our static API key. That API key string is no longer in our source code. Well, let me run this on the simulator then. As you see then, the key gets decrypted and we get to see our synonyms just like before. You can then safely now build and submit this to the App Store with a little more reassurance that your key is safer from all but the most persistent hackers. And if I bring up a keyboard, you'll see that the enter key has been renamed as search. Well, there's one last thing though. We can commit this to our repository and push it up to GitHub, but there's still a problem. The manager class is okay to push now because it's using the namespace version, but the YAML file is also being pushed too, and that defeats our whole purpose. It's got our key. So we need to prevent this file from being pushed up to GitHub. And this is where a gitignore file comes into play. Fortunately, we can use the global gitignore for Xcode to do this for us. And that's easy. Just return to settings. Go to the source control tab. And then the git tab. Scroll down to the gitignore section and add a new line. And then you enter the name of the file that you want to have ignored. And for us, that's the confidential.yml. Now, if we choose to commit our file, that YAML file is no longer presented, and it's safe to push that update now to our manager class up to GitHub, because it's just using that secrets.dollarapi key. You just have to make sure that you keep a copy of that file around, so that if you clone your project on another computer, you'll have to manually add that file to your project root. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment. You can subscribe to my channel to get notifications of new videos. And remember that you can also download my YouTube channel listing app for free and quick access to all of my 350 plus YouTube videos. A link's in the description. And also remember I have a full Swift, Swift UI course available on my Teachable site where you learn how to build a fun, multi-targeted app.